Greetings everyone. Today we're going to explore multiplying radicals. First, let's just take a few notes on the rules about how to multiply radicals. You can only multiply radicals if they have the same index number. So think back to the previous lessons. Index is the type of root that it is. So meaning I cannot multiply a squared root times a cubed root. That's not okay. But I can take a squared root times a squared root. Now, as of right now, we're not going to explore that. We don't have to worry about in Algebra 1. But in Geometry and Algebra 2, you will have different index numbers. The first step, if you want to jot down these sort of as steps, we're going to multiply the numbers outside of the radicals. So the clean numbers out front get multiplied. Second, you're going to multiply the numbers under the radicals. So if they have the same index, so let's say I had a 2 and a 3, I'd have a 6. Easy. Third, you need to simplify your radical just like previous lessons, meaning if I have a radical 8, do not leave it that way. That is not your answer. You need to simplify all radicals using your perfect squared list. That's it for the rules, you guys. So let's take a look at some examples. My suggestion would be to jot these down, pause it, then maybe try a few on your own, see if you think this is going to be easy, and then keep watching. So first, let's take a look at example one. First of all, they have the same index. Multiply the numbers out front. Well, technically, there's a one and a one. I could write a one. Don't really need it. Second, multiply the numbers underneath. I'm going to use different colors here. So I arrive at radical nine, or squared root of nine. Last step, simplify. Well, I technically don't need the one. But what is the squared root of nine? Ooh, three. So my answer is 3. Look at that pattern, you guys. A radical 3 times a radical 3 is a 3. You don't have to memorize that, but it would make your life easier. Let's take a look at example 2. First, they are the same index number. Second, multiply the numbers out front. Technically, there's a 1. Third, multiply the numbers under the radical. So I have a 2 times a 10. That would be a 20. Lastly, simplify, if you can. If I take a look at the 20, what's a perfect square that is a factor of 20? 4 times a 5. I'm not going to keep bringing down the 1. 1 times anything's itself, so I don't need that. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5 is square root of 5. There's my answer. So based on previous lessons, this is the only new step right here. All right, let's look at the next one. First step. Same index number. Multiply the numbers out front. Now, here's something you can do. When things are written next to each other, that implies multiplication. We don't put dots out front of our radicals, but technically there could be. Meaning, I could rearrange. I could say 2 times 4 times radical 12 times radical 15. That's why we can just multiply the numbers out front, because we could rearrange it. You don't have to, all right? My suggestion is to just think numbers out front, multiply those. Numbers underneath, multiply those. Oh boy, 12 times 15. So you definitely, if you need it, have your calculator out to get that 180. Step two, three, excuse me, simplify your radical. So I need a perfect square that fits into 180. Oh man, that's large. Four does fit in, but it's not the largest. That would be more work. Look for the largest perfect square. Um, let's try 16. No, nope. I'm using my calculator too, you guys. 16 doesn't work. 25 won't. 36? 36. All right, when I use my calculator, 180 divided by, divided by, divided by. 36 fits in five times. Don't forget about the 8. Bring it down. Bring it down again. Square root of 36 is 6. Oops, not radical 6. Common mistake. Just 6. 
bring down your radical 5. So the 8 and the 6, what do I do to those? I multiply them. They're written next to each other. So when I take 8 times 6, I should have a clean 48 out front and a radical 5 next to it. Now it's not going to be always as easy as just a simple radical times a radical. We have parentheses with a plus sign, which means what operation are we going to use? Distribution. All right, so let's distribute. 2 times 2, oh, that'd be nice if they were all like that, right? 2 times radical 3. So I'm going to bring down my plus sign. Can I actually multiply a 2 times a radical 3? Not to change it in any way, so it's just going to be 2 radical 3. Can I simplify the radical 3? Nope. And I can't add them. That's my answer. So sometimes they're that simple. So how would you show work? I would want to see at least maybe the arrows to show me that you knew to distribute correctly. So let's look at the next one. 3, excuse me, radical 3 times 3. Well, I can't actually multiply them. And I should write the integer out front of the radicand. All right, just to make it clear. Then I need radical 3 times radical 6. Ooh, they have the same index. I'm going to multiply the numbers underneath to get radical 18. Lastly, simplify. 18 breaks down, 3 does not, so I'm just going to bring down the 3. 18 breaks down into 9 and 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 2 is 2. In a later lesson, we'll get into when can I add, when can I subtract. Um, and in just a little preview, you don't have to know this yet, but if I have a 3x oops, and a 3y, can I add them? No, because they're different. If I have a 3x plus 3x, can I add them? Yes, I can. So it's similar with radicals. Can I have a 3 radical 3 plus 3 radical 2? Nope, because they're different. Could I have a 3 radical 2 plus a 3 radical 2? Yes, I can to get a 6 radical 2. So again, you don't need to know that right now. Okay, um, that's just a little preview. Let's talk about this last example of distribution. Oh my, I'm going to write it out. You don't have to. But technically, I have a 2 times a radical 2 times a radical 5. I just rearranged it a little bit. Bring down my plus sign. Then I have a 3 times a radical 2 times a radical 10. The order in which you multiply does not matter. Multiplication is commutative. That's why I'm flipping it around. First, another way to look at it, multiply the numbers out front. 1 times 2, 2. Multiply the numbers underneath. 2 times 5, radical 10. Plus sign. Rem multiply the numbers out front. 1 times 3, 3. Multiply the numbers underneath. 2 times 10, 20. Lastly, we need to simplify our radicals if we can. Let's talk about 10. Hmm, 9 doesn't fit, 4 doesn't fit, so can't simplify that. Leave it as is. 3 radical 20. Hmm, 20 breaks down into 4 and 5. Radical 4 is 2. And when numbers are written next to each other, we multiply. And then I still have this plus sign separating my radicals. So... Key thing, numbers outside get multiplied, numbers inside get multiplied. Keep simplifying. An answer unsimplified will never be correct in math class. You always, always simplify. As for adding, don't worry about it now. It will come up later. So key thing I'm going to say is to just make sure to always simplify. You need to know those perfect squares. You need to be able to simplify um, and making sure that you are following sort of the steps or the rules of multiplying. All right, so reference those as you do that and always show some work. I will not accept just answers ever. All right, I need to see work just as I've instructed. Make sure you check out Google Classroom. What's the expectation? What are we doing in class? And as always, Power School. What's our grade looking like? What are we missing? What do we need? All right. Keep in touch with any questions. Let me know if you need anything. And until next time, have a good one.